Our final project is a cork bulletin board. And not only does cork come from trees, but we're going to decorate our bulletin board with oak leaves and acorn thumbtacks. Let's take a look at what we're going to use. We're using an oven bake modeling clay. We've got modeling tools. We're also using opaque pens um, and a cork tile that is 12 inches by 12 inches. Also a lightweight cork sheet. And our basic supplies are some rubber cement, we're using a penny as our pattern, thumbtacks, and a pair of scissors. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, on our website, you will find a pattern for an oak leaf, oak leaf. And if you'd like to, you can also draw your own or use a different shape leaf. I'm going to go ahead and I've cut out my pattern. And I'm going to trace the pattern onto the thin cork sheet. And I'm going to use the opaque markers right from the get-go here. You could trace it on with pencil if you wanted to first, but it would just be an extra step that you don't need to take. So I'm going to go all the way around the leaf. And this doesn't have to be perfectly traced because, of course, leaves, once they've fallen off a tree, lose a bit of their shape and they might get a little bit crumpled or a little bit dented. There we go. So I've got my leaf. And then, of course, we're going to draw the veins into it. And again, you can just do this freehand. It doesn't have to be exactly like the pattern. Go a little darker there. There we go. And then the next step is to color our leaves. So I've chosen to do some orange and some yellow. So I'm going to push down my tip of my pen to get it going. And then I'm just going to kind of put it a little bit here and a little bit there. And these pens blend beautifully on the cork. It looks really good when we're done. There we go. And then a little bit of the orange. And then you'll see that as I'm putting the orange on, I'm going to mush it in with the yellow a little bit, overlap things. And then I'm going to come back with the yellow marker one more time, and that's going to give us a nice final blend on it. So you can see how they're mixing together. You can go over the veins a little bit, that's not a problem. And you get a really beautiful leaf, just like you would in nature. You could use a little bit of red on this. You could mix the brown in. And I've got a, a nice sample here showing how the greens look, which is another really pretty option. So once you have finished coloring in your leaf, we're going to cut them out. Now for the sample that I've done, I've used five colored leaves and five leaves with just the brown, because I thought that would be good to show that some leaves, once the color is all gone, just are completely brown. So you'll carefully snip this out. And again, if you make a little mistake, it's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be completely perfect. Try to follow the curve so we get that good oak shape is still showing. And if you find that you are cutting away too much of the outline and your leaf doesn't have as much definition anymore, you can just come back again and redo your outline. So I'm going to actually set this one aside because I've already pre-cut some for us. And let's have a look at the little acorns that we're going to make. I am using an oven baked clay and I'm starting with brown and black clay. And I'm going to make a little bit of a darker brown for the cap of the acorn. Now in acorns, they come in different colors, of course, because depending on what type of oak tree it comes from, you could do green, which would mean your acorn's not ripe yet, or you can do all different shades of brown. So it's not important to get an exact shade. What I've done is I've taken about one third of a little roll of black and maybe three times that of the brown, and I'm gonna twist those colors together to blend them. So you just squish it up, and as you're conditioning your clay, it's going to blend together. So you'll want to roll this back and forth a few times and keep folding it into each other and blending it. And you can see that it goes from this fun marbled effect into a nice solid brown. And of course you should make sure that you're working on a protected surface so that you're not preparing food on the same surface afterwards. So I'm going to have a little look. You can see how I go from the marbling. If I keep blending, I'm going to end up with a nice brown color like that. So I've also got my plain brown, and that's going to be the nut part of our acorn. I'm just going to roll it to a tip. Again, acorns have different shapes, so you might want to go and have a little look around your area and see if you can find an acorn, and then match your acorn to the ones that you find. So after I've got my shape done, I'm going to take the little brown piece and I'm just going to flatten it out with my thumb. Bend it out. And then I would like a fairly circular piece to go on the top for the little cap of the acorn. And so I'm going to put a penny right on there, push the penny into the shape, and then break away the excess clay. 
And that way I'm going to have a nice round piece. And I know that it's going to be approximately the right size. So then I'm going to just flatten it out a little bit again, smooth my edges, and then I'm going to put the cap right on top of the acorn. You can see it's nice and round and fits on there really good. So then I'm going to take a modeling tool and I'm going to cut some little crisscrosses across here. Just go like that. If you look at an acorn, they can be different textures too. So you might even want to go back and put a little bit of texture on the bottom of your acorn. Once that's all done, I've made a little tiny stem out of a piece of brown that I saved. And you can use your modeling tool to just gently push that into the dark brown. Just like that. Now, we have to be able to push this onto our push pin. And so what I've done is just very gently roll it into the back of your acorn and then come back with your modeling tool and dig out that area. Now, if you happen to kind of squish your acorn while you're doing this, it's easy to go back and just re-roll it gently to get your shape back. You want to make sure that this hole that you're putting in the back is a little bit bigger than your tack so that you have room to push it in really nicely. So you can see I've kind of squished it a little bit, so I'll just fold it back into its shape. And now just the acorn piece goes into the oven to bake. You don't want to bake your thumbtack, okay? And then once it comes out, it's going to be nice and hard like this. And we're going to glue that onto the back of our thumbtack. I'm just going to move these aside. And what we're going to do is use the rubber cement for this. And so it gives it a really nice bond and keeps it on there really steadily. And I'm going to fill that little hole up really good with this to be sure that I'm not going to have it dropping off. And then this is going to take a couple hours to dry. So you'll want to leave it with the thumbtack up if you can. Maybe we can prop it between something and let that dry. So our final step is to just add our leaves onto our bulletin board. And I've just put them kind of hanging a little bit off the side. Put them in a pretty pattern so it looks like they're falling leaves, maybe blowing in the wind a little bit. And again, we're going to use the rubber cement to hold these on. So if we take a look at our finished project, you can see we've got the oak leaves all along the top, or the oak leaves, sorry, and our acorn to hold our little notes in place.